Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today is a big day because we have won. Inside Face has reconsidered, they have paddled back, and I hope you're as happy about this as I am because all of this is incredibly important. But the danger for the AI community is not over yet. So let me explain. First of all, of course, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming together and fight for this important cause because all of this is very important for the future of the AI community. And I'm happy that I could lend my voice to your struggles and your fears. And of course, I'm also very happy that both of my videos that have been banned are reinstated and you can watch them again on YouTube. However, this doesn't mean that the situation is resolved because fear and danger is still lingering in the air. And I want to shed some more light on this situation, both in regards to the dangers for the AI community, but also about the position of what Inside Face actually wanted to achieve, because both of these perspectives are important and there is some method to the madness. So hear me out. First of all, let's talk about the danger of censorship for the AI community. And we face that danger from different areas, from different companies and what we can do, what we can prompt, and now even what we can say in videos, in podcasts, in public statements where we have an open discussion. There's a lot of censorship going around. And don't underestimate this situation as the market is heating up and companies are fighting over market shares. I'm pretty sure we're going to see even more aggressive methods to take down things that companies don't want to hear about their product. Again, I'm not here to drum up any drama, but we have to talk about this. So let's first talk about the danger of censorship for the AI community. What is it that Inside Face initially tried to achieve? They wanted to remove videos from YouTube because they disagreed with the content of the videos, but also with the title, the keywords, the descriptions out of ethical concerns, as they say. I guess there is also some corporate interest somewhere in there. However, on a GitHub thread, the initial founder of Inside Face pointed out that even using the word deepfake in the title or the keywords could lead for the video to be removed. And they have reconsidered since then. They promised they were not going to do that anymore. And I hope they have reinstated all of the videos that they banned out of these strange reasons. And this is just not how things work in a free world. I do, of course, understand that a company doesn't want to have their product associated with bad things and with criminals and with manipulation. However, I have a huge problem with censorship because of controlling what we can and cannot say about a product or in regards to a product. Is deepfake a bad thing? Sure, of course it can be. However, here is the thing. If you look on the GitHub page of Inside Face, they talk themselves about facial identity swapping. And on their own website, the command for using the technology is swap ID. Now, I would guess that ID stands for identity. So you swap out an identity. And when you look on Google and search for the definition of deepfake, you will see that it is defined as a video of a person in which their face or body has been digitally altered so that they appear to be someone else. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but this very much sounds to me like swapping of identity. Of course, the malicious intent makes it into a deep fake, but we can't ignore that this technology, if it is built to swap out a face and swap out the identity of a person, can be used for deep fakes. Now, here's a thing that is even more important than that. Free speech is important because this is the dialogue the open discussion in which society and culture defines who they want to be in the future. We have to be able to talk about the potentials of technology, but also about the dangers of technology. And you would think that a company that is based parts of its technology on an MIT license and the other part 
of their technology on research would understand that the global discourse about the potentials and dangers of new technology in an open way is an important thing. Of course, at this point, we also have to talk about the other side, the dark side of the web, if you will. Because even though the methods of inside phase have been wrong, the concerns are based in reality. There's a real danger in the creation of deep fake content for the global community. You, me, everybody. So here are some examples of that. First of all, of course, there is political manipulation. We have already seen that in real life. This is a danger to a level where this can actually change the course of your government and the history of your country where you're going in the future. This is a deep and real concern and we have seen it happen in the past and we're going to see it happen right now and even more strongly in the future. So that is very problematic. And I do understand when you say I'm educated, I understand it, I see a deep fake because right now the technology is not so good, but also you have to think about all the people out there, maybe from all the generations, maybe from people who are not as tech savvy. When they see these videos, they don't know anything about AI technology. They will believe what they see and this can change their opinion. It can also change their vote and by that the course in which your country is going forward. This is a demise of democracy. It's a real problem. Another very problematic use of deepfakes, of course, is the likeness of celebrities. All these actors and singers and models out there that are beautiful and we often feel a personal emotional connection towards them. It is all fun and games as long as we just play around on our computers privately and just want to have fun with the technology and explore the possibilities of these new AI abilities. However, the situation becomes a lot more dire if this technology is abused and then shared to the public. Now, of course, we have to differentiate here between the artistic use because art has to be free in its expression. So, for example, for reasons of comedy, for satire, for actual artistic works, but also for criticizing public figures in what they do, that is a use that should be allowed. On the other hand, if you suddenly have thousands of people out there create images of that actor or singer or model in situations with clothing or without clothing, doing actions or being in positions that they don't want to see themselves in and that is hurting them and their brand and their personality and psychologically damaging them. Don't underestimate this, please, is a form of online bullying and it can actually lead to very deep depression for these people. That is a real danger. That is an abuse of the technology and is really problematic. So all of these bad things that can happen, political manipulation, scams, identity theft, the destroying of the reputation of a person and psychologically damaging them, all of that is very bad. And this is inherent in the technology of AI, but banning content because it addresses these dangers or showcases examples of these abilities is not the right way to go. As a matter of fact, the open discussion is the most important thing that we have to do to understand the dangers of AI and find solutions for that, but also to educate the people out there about the abilities of the AI and how it can be used and abused so that they can protect themselves. I really hope that Inside Face in the future is joining these open discussions rather than trying to limit them. And I hope and I know that the AI community will be a vital part for finding solutions and improving the use of AI technology in the future. Let me know in the comments what you think about this topic. Be open, nice and constructive. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See you soon, my friends. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.